I want to go back to last week's word. How many were here last week? And you heard the word, the prophetic word that Pastor Frank said that uh, the Lord had given him. And it was, we are crossing a threshold. So I want to build on that in the sense of how, how the Holy Spirit spoke to me, because I'm sure that he's going to build upon it, line upon line, in a teaching man manner that's going to become a series, because that's what happens. And, and the Lord gives him a thought and gives him a word, and then it becomes a series, and it ministers so much to us. How many can look at where you are and say, I'm not the same place I was even a week ago? I can. We have to believe that God's taking us on this journey. Amen? So last week, Apostle Frank released a prophetic word to us. It was, we are crossing a threshold. And as his e-blast went forth, it is truth that the word which was released is resonating with us. It resonated. It was interesting that when we were in worship, that Sonny and Leanne both began to talk about how sound resonates. And that was a resonating word with us, and sound was resonating. And, and so those who heard it with ears of the Spirit, to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying, received it. You know, when we're in the Spirit, and we're, we're hearing from the Lord, our spirit will be quickened to the word of the Lord. Not only does it get quickened to the word of the Lord, but it gets impacted by the spirit of God to be able to move us in the spirit to the place that God is calling us to go. And, and that's what a prophetic word will do. That's what a word in season will do. But specifically, we're going to deal with that's what this prophetic word from the Lord through a vessel was, was doing and is doing and is doing now. So those of us who heard it, it resonated with us. I thought it was a very profound word. It ministered to me right away. And when we hear with the ears of the Spirit, we don't, we don't look at it by what we see in the flesh. We are, we're getting ministered to by the Spirit. When he released that word uh, last Sunday, I saw that doorway, and I saw the Lord, just as he spoke again to me today that I released, was I saw him in that doorway, and I saw him taking our hands, and, and he, was kept, he had eyes of fire, and he said, and, and it wasn't, he didn't even speak, it was like his eyes were speaking, keep your eyes on me, step into this new place. That's where he was calling us last week, that's where he's calling us today, that's where he's calling us in this times and seasons ahead. That's why we are crossing a threshold. So resonate, what does that word mean? It means to produce or to be filled with a deep, full, reverberating sound. Another way to phrase it that we would understand is to strike a chord. So when the chord is, is struck, it resonates, and we hear it. The same thing in the natural happens in the spirit. And even another way to express it is in terms that we should, as Christians, understand because what? It's our Christianese language. It is quickened in our spirit, which witnesses to the word that has been spoken from the Lord. So it's quickened, it's released into our spirit, and it's deposited there. What happens once it's deposited there? When it's deposited there, it begins to activate and produce what the prophetic word said needed to be produced. It begins to move in action. How many know we have heard so many times, we live and we move in the power of God. We live and we move in his being. We live and we move. He is not stagnant. He is not standstill. He is always moving. And because he is always moving and we're in the spirit, we're always to be moving as well. So we have to 
We have to understand those things of the Spirit. I'm not talking to uh, those that are, are babes in the Lord. I'm talking to mature Christians that are sitting in this sanctuary and that are listening online. But we always need to be reminded. Why? Because the things of the earth and the things of the world will try to drown out the things of the Spirit. They try to drown it out. Not only just the things in government or on governmental or on TV or things that we open ourselves up to with our ear gates and our eye gates, but, but our flesh will try to drown it out by doing a lot of good things. And maybe those good things are okay, but we can never take our focus off that we are spiritual beings moving in the power of God, moving in the spirit. Although we're here and we're wearing this earthly body, we are spiritual beings in the spirit realm. And we have to remember that to walk in the spirit, to move in the spirit, and to, and to be able to hear, see, and understand the revelations in the Spirit. So, I wanted to say, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you about it later, but I really am humbled by the visitation of the Holy Spirit this morning in the early morning hours. When Apostle Frank asked me to, would I be willing to minister today, I, I had a whole lot of things going on yesterday, but, but I was quickened and I was prompted by the Lord to say yes. So I said yes, and, and I could have allowed those things. I could have allowed them to get in the way, but I didn't. And you know what happened? I felt the peace of God from the time I said yes. Amen. The peace of God till even now when I'm standing here. And when the Holy Spirit, I knew that by the Spirit of God, as he's done so many times, that's why we have to understand, each one of us is led by the Spirit of God. We are all led in different ways. Yes, he's going to speak to us. It's going to be the, the whole comprised way that the Spirit of God leads us. But we all have different callings and different giftings. And God wants to speak to us in different ways. No, he's not going to speak to us outside of his word. No, he's not going to speak to us through, he may try to speak to, uh, false prophets might try to speak, but God's not going to speak to us like that, and we're going to have a quickening in our spirit to know and discern the difference. And I believe part of this stepping over the, the threshold is another activation of discernment. Because of what the darkness is in the world, the Lord wants us to have our, be as wise as serpents, to have our eyes open, our spirits to to discern and to and to hear the voice of the Lord and another voice what they will not follow and we have to have that in our spirit and part of this going over is is not just yes it is we're going to be blessed but it's an increase in the spirit man it's an increase in our spirit man now we already have it all in there but here's the thing we don't recognize it you see, we have everything. We have everything we need. We have all of the Holy Spirit, every part of the Holy Spirit inside of us. We have the Father. We have the Son. But sometimes we just don't move in that and, and go in that place where there's more that we can see, more revelation, eye to see, ear to hear, heart to understand, moving in that realm of the Spirit. And that's where crossing over into this new place is going to take us. How many want to go on the journey? Amen. Amen. Okay, so when, when, when I was early this morning, about 3.30 this morning, I, I just was awake and I was praying in the spirit. And, and I want to just give God the glory because his wisdom and his quiet deposits of truths, messages and instructions, they're immeasurable. It's not my way to be in this pulpit all the time, but it's my honor and privilege to minister, to be a mouthpiece for the Lord wherever and whenever called upon. And that should be how we all feel. 
You know, whether we're in the pulpit, on the street corner, in the gas station, at, at the grocery store, talking on our jobs, we should all remember that we're a mouthpiece. We're a vessel to bring forth truth and revelation, healing and ministry to those who need it, those who don't know Jesus. It's not just in the pulpit. It's an honor and a privilege to serve the Lord wherever he places us and to say whatever it is that he has us to do. If it was only in the pulpit, who is going to hear the gospel? Yes, we have technology, but if it's only in the pulpit, who's going to hear the gospel? It's got to be hundreds, taking it to hundreds, taking it to thousands, and speaking the word of the Lord that brings life and healing and ministry to people because they're dying. There's a dying generation that we're called to meet and to minister to. His peace and his stirring in the early morning hours was his deposit and download. So let's share just for a short time this instruction. Apostle Frank said, we are crossing a threshold. That word threshold means the place or the means of entry. It's an entrance. It's also a place or a point of beginning. Now we had, we went to the new, we went to the new. We were coming out of the old and we went to the new. And God provided in the new. Now, he doesn't want us to be just satisfied in the new. We're going to a place of new beginnings. We're going to a place where there's a point of a beginning step. The definition uh, of uh, and on at the threshold, it's at the beginning of something or very close to something, such as a new condition, a discovery, a revelation, direction. I like this one. Awakening of our spirits to the new place, to the new beginning. That's what we're going to use as an example. You see, when we said that the word resonated, and he used that, that the word resonated, that was a sound that was permeating through our spirit being that we witnessed in our spirit that said there's something new. There's a new beginning. There, we're crossing a threshold. Are we going to grab onto that by faith? and say, I want to cross that threshold. Yes, I'm going to go across that threshold. I may not understand it. I might not even know what's on the other side of that. But I am going to go there. Why? Because there's an unction of the Spirit of God by faith to take the Lord's hand and to go over the threshold. We have to be willing to do it by faith, regardless of what we see. That's where the Lord wants to take us. Now listen, when the Lord releases a prophetic word, especially through the office of a prophet or an apostle and others, it carries the power and fire to move us from one place to another. And this, what I'm reading to you, is directly what I heard from the Lord this morning at 5.30. When the Lord releases a prophetic word, especially through the office of an prophet or apostle and others, it carries the power and fire to move us from one place to another. Listen, the word is activated in eternity. It's carried in the spirit to a vessel of clay. It's released by the mouthpiece of the Lord, the vessel of clay. It's deposited into the earth to manifest in the lives of the people within the hearing whose spirits are in tune or whose spirits resonate with the Lord. Our spirits are quickened and there is a divinely 
supernatural impartation, expectation, and added faith to believe and move forward in the word that was received. That's a lot. But it is the process of what God takes us through when we receive that word. This word and other prophetic words we hear and receive that resonate in us and with us produce a sound of heaven into the now, and they must be paid attention to. In other words, when we hear it, we don't want to be those that hear it and walk away. We want to be those that hear it and stay in that place and let it resonate inside of us so that faith is activated and we are able to move forward in that word that was spoken because that word is powerful and carries the anointing of heaven to bring forth what is declared. We receive, it resonates within us, producing a sound of heaven into the now and must be paid attention to. And listen, we must shift our thinking to receive that word as a word of promise, a word of hope, a word of expansion, a word of elevation. Why? Because it takes us from one level to another. We go from lower to higher, and we enter into that new sphere that the Lord is talking about. That is exciting. That is something that God is doing for us and in us and through us now. It's not for later, it's for now but we have to grab a hold of it in the spirit realm. We have to see it for what it is and begin to move in it. Each one of us has a calling. We cannot run from the calling of God. We cannot. Now, we may think we are, but we never will because the Lord is the Lord. And if he has to put up roadblocks, he will. He'll bring a donkey to speak if he has to. But he will get our attention, and, we will, and he will direct our path. How many want to go from one level to another? And you know, it's not, it's not, sometimes, you know, we can say, I don't know how to get there. That's where faith and trust come in. Because do you think we're going to get ourselves there? No, he's going to get us there. So the dependency is on him. It's not on our human dependency. It's on the spirit of the living God. Who's, if he calls us to that place, he's taking us to that place. He's not going to call us there and not fulfill it. Some of us are finding ourselves in that place right now where we really don't know exactly what the Lord wants us to do. We may be in the middle of things. We may, we may have started some things and wondering. You know, there's questions. That's all, that's all a part of life. But where there's questions, there's also answers. And those come from the Spirit of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. Someone who wants to release something, I'm hearing a real bad thing in my ear. Um, someone who, who says something, you can have two people. One person can say something, the other person can say something. This person saying something can be just them saying it out of their own spirit. This person saying something can be the spirit of God. And when it's the spirit of God, it's going to carry the power of God. It's going to have the impact of the word of God that's going to impact to go to a new place over a threshold. It's not going to hold back and just die in that place. It's going to have momentum. It's going to pick up. It's going to reverberate inside of us and resonate inside of us. Sometime I believe that we have to set that plumb line where we move from the flesh 
back into that spirit realm to see. Yes, we are on. on we're here. We're on the. We're on the on the earth, and we're moving in in our fleshly bodies. But we need to move in the spirit of God, and we need to do what the Lord has called us to do. So the scripture indicates this one that I read, 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. This scripture indicates words that come from the natural man will not carry the power of God. Holy Spirit, to bring about the manifestation of those things declared into being are the spiritual words that resonate. Those words are uttered by a vessel of God, prompted by the Lord, will produce an effective result in our lives. It'll be filled with the power of God. Why? To accelerate and move the word from eternity into now. Look at that. Say that. From eternity into now. You see, it's coming from eternity. It was released, and now it's in the now. Will you always see what's in the now? There are times it'll manifest immediately. Well, what do we do with that? Paul's instruction to Timothy concerning personal call that can still apply to us as individuals and the body. 1 Timothy 1.18. This I command and entrust to you, Timothy, my son. In accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight. You see, there are going to be things that when the word is released to us, whether it's a personal or whether now we have received a corporate word, our eyes need to be fixed and we need to be praying about that corporate word. Why? Because God wants to manifest some things. He wants to do some things in the now. So what did he say to Timothy? He said, You're gonna, you need to fight the good fight concerning this word. What does that mean? Well, that means that probably all hell will try to stop it. That means that the enemy is not going to be happy with, moving, with you moving forward, with me moving forward, with things happening in the spirit realm. He's not going to be happy. He's already lost, but we still have to be aware that we have to war. What do we war with? Sometimes we're just warring with ourselves. I don't see it. I don't feel it. Uh, I don't know. Is God going to do it? And, and I'm not going to church because God didn't answer me no more. And I'm going to stay home. And, and others who are watching, if, if that's you, come to church. I mean, the bottom line is we, we, will, we have to war with it because this flesh does not want to line itself up at times. We want to become discouraged. We want to be, instead of mature Christians, we want to be babies. Oh, he didn't answer me right away, so, you know, I'm just not going to come. And, and, you know, I don't know, God doesn't ever answer me. It's only been a day. Wait till you really grow up in the Lord, and you got to wait some years. And you have to keep fighting that fight. You have to keep saying, I'm standing anyhow. Guess what? Here's the shield of faith. I'm going to receive. The Lord said it. I believe it. It's going to happen. It's not going to happen in our time. It doesn't happen in our time. We're not always in God's timetable of clock of what he wants to do. But we are there for the movement where it will take us to an expected end. We have to know that. So words released, words released are activated and we must receive, declare, and go beyond our sight and feelings of the natural. We have to focus on the Lord not circumstances. We have to walk in faith and receive it. That's warring over the prophetic word. God said it, I believe it, and, and therefore I'm going to walk in it regardless. I'm going to walk in it regardless. It doesn't matter. Now, interesting, when uh, Jesus talked to the Pharisees, how many know that if anything's going to stir up, in that realm, to keep us in the flesh realm, it's going to be a Pharisee spirit or a religious spirit. That thing will become activated to try to stop us and try to explain to us why it couldn't be or why it's this way or that way. It, here's what the Lord said. 
Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, this made me jump. It did. It made me jump. It's Luke 17, 20, and 21. Not that I didn't hear it before, but I got excited. He answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see it here, see it's here, see it's there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within us. So wherever we go, whatever we do, the kingdom is produced. It is within us. And that power of the kingdom of God within us overcomes every power, every obstacle, every situation, every lack of faith. It is the kingdom of God that is within us. I love the scripture when Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot what? See. Some versions say something else, but I like that. It says he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why? Because we have to have spiritual eyes to see. We have to look with those eyes of faith, those spiritual eyes that are enlightened, where revelation came in. Revelation, you know, we could be in a dark room and have a, all of a sudden the sun comes out and we have a skylight. Not even turning a light on, but there's a skylight and the sun comes out. And all of a sudden, the sun is coming down in, and there's a revelation of a ray of sunshine, and then we can see some dust that we didn't clean. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but all of that, I mean, it reveals, doesn't it? There's revelation. So it is when our spirits are opened to the kingdom and to the king. So last week, well... I'm going to read this. So that kingdom which is within us will allow us to access, access. We're talking about stepping over that threshold. That kingdom within us will allow us to access the levels of kingdom revelation, manifestation, understanding, wisdom, signs, fellowship, and will launch us into the realm of the spirit where we are assigned for such a time as this. That new sphere, filled with discernment and understanding, is a new level coupled with added faith and power for the journey. In other words, I can't see us. The Lord saying, grab a hold of my hand, we grab a hold of his hand and not have his power permeate us. To take us by the hand to that new place. Even when the Emmaus Road, they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? Because of the power, because of the resonating power, because of the resonating uh, presence of God that was there. So that's what he wants to do with us. We have to have eyes of faith and believe. Beloved, in unity, in unity believe and trust the Lord to do it. Added faith and power for the journey. I'm almost done, but not really, but I'm going to hurry. Um, so last week, Apostle Frank referenced Joshua. And we will as well. And he said, and this is a declaration of truth that came from Caleb. He said, now behold, as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive these 45 years since he spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And this is Joshua 14, 10, and 11. So here I am today, 85 years old, still as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me out. As my strength was then, so is it now for war, for going out and for coming in. In other words, no matter what age we are, God gives us the strength to do whatever it is that he has ordained for us to do. He has given us that strength, that power, that anointing. He's not measuring years like we measure years. He measures time according to his own timetable and purpose. So what, so what an example of waiting for a promise. No matter how many years, no matter what age has to say, the process takes us to the place 
that releases us into the promise. The process takes us to the place that releases us into the promise. The kingdom signs are supposed to follow us, those who are commissioned. This, this also was a revelation to me today, not that I don't understand it. These signs will accompany those who believed, those who believed. In my name, they will, and we know the whole, we know the story. We know that they're going to pick up serpents, drink deadly poison. Nothing will harm them. Lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. But he was saying these signs will accompany those that believe. Believed what? Believe through the preaching of the word that we release. The signs are also going to be evident in them. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord is within them. So that's called multiplication. We multiply others and birth others into the kingdom. We're going to get increased revelation by going over the threshold. This scripture that was released on the e-blast, Isaiah 58.8. I, I pulled it from the Amplified Bible. I like the Amplified with this verse. It says, then your light, your light, will break forth like the dawn, and your healing, restoration, new life, will quickly spring forth. You see, something happens when you take a step into a new realm. Something happens when you step over the threshold. Something happens when you go into a new sphere. There's a quickening. There's a quickening. It happens quickly. Why? Because time is moving and pushing. And when I say time, I'm talking about eternal time. Eternal time is on an eternal timetable, and he's pushing. So when we step into and over that threshold, there's something's happening quickly. Are we willing to do it? Are we willing to go? Did it resonate with you? It resonated with me. Do we know what's on the other side of the threshold? No, not always, but we know it's good. We know it's good. We know it's good. In Joshua 3, 1 to 5, Israel is crossing the Jordan. Then Joshua rose early. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to Pastor Frank's scripture. Your righteousness will go before you. Why? Because it's leading you, listen, to peace and prosperity. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Isn't that interesting? Here's the Lord taking your hand. There's his eyes of fire. You're going over the threshold. Behind you, you're not looking because that's the past. And you know that when you take that step over, there's peace and prosperity. His promises are what? Yes and amen. True. He's faithful and true. So the, the light will break forth like the dawn. Restoration is coming. New life is coming. It's coming quickly. It's springing forth. There's been a season of planting. There's been a season now of, of we need to sow and reap. You know what? If we have things in our hand and we sow it, then we're going to reap a harvest. That's the bottom line. What we sow, we reap. We sow it, we're going to reap a harvest. Why? Because it's no longer in our hand. It's in the ground, and the Lord's able to bless it and bring forth the harvest. Joshua 3, 1 to 5, and I'm going to be closing with this. Israel crosses the Jordan. Then J Joshua rose early in the morning, and he and all the sons of Israel set out from Shittim to, and came to the Jordan, and they lodged there before they crossed. So they came there, and they took some time, and they situated themselves now, don't forget, Israel had come out of most of the, the generation that didn't believe the Lord because of unbelief died in the wilderness. They died there. But Israel was coming out, and it was a new generation. Can I say this to you? 
that no matter our age, we can be a new generation. A new generation is not based on physical age. You know how we're a new generation? By obeying the word of the Lord and crossing over when he tells us to. That's the new generation. We try to put a new generation saying it's only an age, you know, it's 12 to 16 or 16 to 24. The Lord's not measuring that. We could be 80 and a new generation. He's 85 and a new generation going in and taking what? Possession of a land that he waited 45 years for. He waited for it. He didn't give up. He didn't sit down and cry under a juniper tree. He waited because he knew he was going to receive it, no matter what time. We can be a new generation, regardless of our age, preparing a way for another generation. So they came and they sat there before they crossed. I just wonder what they were doing those three days. They had to have been preparing their own hearts. They had to have been overwhelmed with the presence of God. And at the end of the three days, the officers went through in the midst of the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God with the Levitical priests carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. We got to set out from our place, and we got to go after it. We can't stand back and say, I'm going to watch everybody else cross over. I'm not doing that. I'm going. Everybody should have the same mentality. Everybody should have the same heart. I'm going. So when we see that, he said, when you see it, when you see the Levitical priest carrying it, then you shall set out and you shall go after it. Go after it. However, there shall be between you and it a distance. And he measures out the distance. And he says, do not come near it. And I'm going to insert this. Because God, God's leading the people following the ark, instructed them, don't go near it. Number one, it's holy. But with leading, the priests may turn. You may miss the turn. They may stop. You might miss the stop. You may go ahead and try to do it on your own. Or you might miss the opportunity. That's why we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead. That's the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we have to submit to that leading. And he said, stay behind it that you may know the way by which you shall go. For you have not passed this way before. It's a new place. We have not passed this way before. And the scripture that Joshua says in verse 5, he said, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We want to be led by the Spirit of God to cross the threshold into the place that God has for us. We don't even know exactly what it's going to be, and it can be something different for all of us. But one thing will be for sure, that we are going to come together corporately in unity, and we are going to see ourselves go to that new place and that new realm and that new height in the Lord and that new level of understanding, revelation, discernment, giftings. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And he is going to bring those giftings to the service, surface and stir them up once again. How many know you have gifts inside of you that God wants to stir and stir and stir and take and use in this new generation? Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are going to receive an offering. But this house really was today filled with an electrifying presence of God. It was electrifying. It was electrifying because he chose to 
fill it with that presence. It was impacting. It was. It was impactful. And it will be. And it is. And it's for the now. Father, I just seal. Lord, together we stand in unity and agreement. Lord, we say yes. We say yes to crossing the threshold. We say yes to expansion of ministry. We say yes to healing of our families and and restoration. We say yes, God, to your love, to your grace. We say yes to your strength, to your power. We say yes to your consecration. We say yes to repentance. We say yes, Lord, to all those things, God, that you have called us to look at. Lord, would you look at the secret places of our heart today? Would you go deep in our spirits? Would you quicken us with your presence and your power? Would you extend out your hand as you did and call us over that threshold into the new, into the realm of the spirit? into the sphere of the spirit that we've never been before. Would you give us that excitement in our spirit? Lord, emotional excitement only lasts so long. We need it in the spirit. We want to be excited in our spirit. We want to be filled again with your presence, your power, your love. We want to have, Lord, those dry places become, become watered by your spirit today. We're receiving it, Lord. Let every word, Lord, that was utter today. Let it come in and let it go deep in the spirit and let it do what you have intended for it to do in our lives by your spirit, by your power, in Jesus' name. Pastor Ralph. 